the spoiled Princess Liriana's skull cracked and blue blood oozed down the console as her craft continued to jolt from an asteroid storm. There would be interplanetary war if she expired here and if she was found by a filthy human. The outer edge of galactic space was not kind to lone human freighter pilots. Darren Carter had just dropped a payload of mining equipment on outpost XD-232, a small colony on the fringes of known space. As his ship disengaged the station and started the journey home on autopilot, Darren stripped down to his boxes. No one was around to judge his appearance or modesty. There were also no friends or family to go home to. His deceased wife and child were ashes scattered in the star wind. The weary pilot closed his heavy eyelids, drifting off to a sleep plagued by nightmares. The red alert klaxons jerked him awake as the ship suddenly ground to a halt. The scanners had picked up a distress beacon just a few clicks away. The signal was weak, and when Darren triangulated the position, he saw nothing but a meteor storm obscuring the signal location. As much as he wanted to ignore this disruption on the long, lonely flight back, Darren opted to be a good Samaritan. His late mother would rise from the grave and slap him if he left someone to die. Through the heavy rocks and debris, he could spot a small escape pod, spinning listlessly through the storm. The paint on its hull was blackened, but there was no mistaking the royal breen insignia etched on one corner. A cold pit formed in his stomach. Those arrogant, pretentious and warlike aliens didn't venture here, and pulling a breen onto the freighter meant a 50% chance of getting his throat slit, 40% chance of somehow causing an intergalactic incident or war, and a 100% chance of getting blue alien stains on the seats. The freighter extended a magnetized tow cable, snagging the pod and pulling it into a cargo airlock. Darren groaned as he pulled on a shirt and made his way down to the hold, dreading whatever rich overlord was about to berate him for the poor service and travel conditions. He punched the access panel next to the airlock angrily, venting the hold and opening the pod. A harsh, acrid stench of fuel and chemicals billowed out of the doorway as it opened, making Darren cough and cover his mouth. His blurry and burning eyes spotted a figure crumpled over the navigation controls, silver hair matted with blue blood. Even unconscious, Princess Liriana still had a dignified aura of royalty, soft, pale, blue, unblemished skin, and a face that looked delicate even while grimacing in pain. If she died like this, the Galactic Emperor would hunt Darren to the ends of the universe. He stepped inside and scooped up the princess in his arms, then looked around the decimated escape pod interior. Her ship had definitely not been the only casualty of the asteroid storm. If she couldn't tell how she ended up here, they'd have to find out before the rest of her people did. As the princess recovered in Darren's medbay, he searched her crashed escape pod for any clues about her origin or intentions. He powered on the damaged computer console, and after a few glitches, a series of messages appeared on the cracked screen. Darren's eyes widened as he read the panicked correspondence between Liriana and her royal advisers. Emperor Boron, the bloodthirsty dictator of the Breen, was planning to force Liriana to marry him through blackmail and threats. If she refused, Boron would send his armies to raise her homeworld to ashes. The messages made Boron's cruelty clear. He had already destroyed planets for far less. With no other options, Liriana chose to flee, hoping to find some way to save her people from a tyrant's wrath. Darren returned to the medical bay, watching the unconscious princess with a heavy heart. He knew he couldn't abandon someone in such a desperate situation. With a few taps on the control console, he locked in coordinates for the Zeta Orionis system, an uncharted sector far off the normal trade routes. It would be difficult for anyone to track them there. As the ship accelerated into warp, proximity alarms began blaring on the bridge. An Imperial Breen warship was approaching at attack speed, its weapons already locked onto Darren's freighter. A vid screen blinked to life, revealing a scarred, one-eyed Breen commander sneering with disgust. Human filth, you have abducted Princess Liriana, our future empress. Return her and submit yourself for execution, and your death will be swift. The alien spat in a guttural voice. Resist, and I, Commander Zaxxon, shall make your end legendary in its agony. Darren recognized Zaxxon from news hollows. 
He was Emperor Boron's favorite enforcer and most ruthless exterminator of rebel factions. Some even believed Zaxxon's burning hatred for humanity exceeded the Emperor's. The sensors showed just how outclassed Darren's freighter was compared to the warship's firepower. But he had navigated this sector for years, and he knew a few tricks. Catch me if you can, you overgrown gecko, Darren growled, swerving the ship into a dense, uncharted asteroid field. The Breen warship pursued, firing plasma blasts that vaporized the tumbling space rocks around them. Liriana groaned from the medical bay, starting to regain consciousness. Darren gritted his teeth and flew deeper into the treacherous asteroids, struggling to evade Zaxxon's assault. The chase had become a deadly game, and the stakes couldn't be higher. Two lives and perhaps even two worlds hung in the balance. The Breen commander's eyes blazed with wrath as he watched the human pilot dodge and weave through the field with uncanny skill. Zaxxon had obliterated fleets and glassed planets, but never had he encountered such an infuriatingly elusive target. His claws dug into the command chair as he snarled new orders to the crew, demanding more speed and firepower. He would atomize a thousand asteroids if that's what it took to reduce Darren and his ship to their component atoms. Darren felt his heart pounding in his chest as he pushed the freighter's engines to their limits. Warning lights flashed across the console, the shields were failing, the hull was buckling, and the power core was overheating. He knew he had to find a way out of the asteroid field before the ship was torn apart. But as he glanced at the readouts from the medical bay, Darren saw Liriana struggling to stand, her face etched with pain and determination. In that moment, he realized that no matter what happened to him, he had to find a way to save her and her people from Boron's clutches. Even if it meant facing the most dangerous commander in the galaxy in a rickety old freighter. With Zaxxon's warship looming behind them, Darren punched in the coordinates for the Erebus Nebula, a treacherous expanse of dust and ionized gas that scrambled sensors and communication relays. The abandoned trade station, Zeta Prime, lurked at the heart of the interstellar cloud like a ghostly sentinel. It was a risky gambit, but it might just buy them enough time to find a way to fight back against Boron's forces. As the freighter docked with the ancient station, Liriana emerged from the medical bay, still unsteady on her feet, but radiating a fierce determination. Darren tossed her a plasma rifle from the ship's armory and nodded toward the airlock. We don't have much time before Zaxxon catches up. Let's see if this rust bucket has any secrets that can help us. The station's corridors were dark and lifeless, the air stale and heavy with the stench of decay. Darren's flashlight beam played over the crumbling walls, revealing faded murals and shattered display screens. Liriana's eyes widened as she spotted a familiar symbol etched into a bulkhead. The crest of the long-extinct Prothean Empire, an ancient civilization rumored to have possessed technology far beyond anything in the modern galaxy. The Protheans, she whispered, tracing the symbol with a slender finger. If they left something behind here, it could change everything. Darren grunted in acknowledgement, his gaze sweeping the shadows for any sign of movement. They pressed deeper into the station, following the twisting passageways until they reached a cavernous chamber that might once have been a cargo hold. In the center of the room, illuminated by a shaft of starlight from a shattered viewport, stood a towering monolith of black metal and pulsing energy. What the hell is that thing? Darren muttered, approaching the artifact cautiously. As he drew closer, a holographic interface flickered to life, displaying schematics and equations that made his head spin. Liriana's eyes widened as she scanned the readouts. It's a weapon, she breathed. A device that can neutralize the Breen's advanced shields and cripple their ships. But it needs a power source, something called a quantum singularity core. Darren's brow furrowed as he accessed the station's database, searching for any mention of the rare energy source. His search led him to a single entry. A notorious pirate gang, known as the Crimson Corsairs, had recently raided a Breen research outpost and made off with a prototype singularity core. They were rumored to be hiding out in the nearby Sigma Draconis system, using an asteroid field as cover for their illicit activities. Looks like we're going to have to pay these Crimson Corsairs a visit, Darren said grimly, meeting Liriana's gaze. 
and something tells me they won't be too keen on parting with their prize. As they raced back to the freighter, alarms began blaring throughout the station. Zaxxon's warship had arrived, disgorging squads of heavily armed Breen troopers onto the ancient structure. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as Darren and Liriana fought their way to the airlock, dodging and weaving through the crumbling corridors. They barely made it back to the ship before the Breen breached the cargo hold, the monolith's eerie glow vanishing behind a wall of debris and twisted metal. Darren slammed the throttle forward, sending the freighter hurtling out of the station's docking bay and into the swirling chaos of the nebula. But even as they left Zeta Prime behind, Darren knew that their troubles were just beginning. The Crimson Corsairs were a ruthless bunch, and infiltrating their stronghold would be no easy feat. As he plotted a course for Sigma Draconis, he glanced over at Liriana, seeing a new respect and determination in her eyes. They might have started as unlikely allies, but now they were bound together by a common cause and a desperate hope for survival. The journey to the pirate's lair was tense and silent, the weight of their mission hanging heavy in the recycled air. Darren pored over the scant intel he had on the Crimson Corsairs, trying to formulate a plan that wouldn't get them both killed. Liriana spent hours in the ship's small training room, honing her combat skills and familiarizing herself with the human weapons in the armory. As they approached the Sigma Draconis system, Darren brought the freighter out of warp at the edge of the asteroid field, engaging the ship's cloaking device to avoid detection. He turned to Liriana, his eyes hard and serious. Listen up, princess. These pirates aren't going to roll out the red carpet for us. We need to get in, find that singularity core, and get out before they even know we're there. And if things go south... He tapped the plasma rifle slung across his back. We'll just have to improvise. Liriana nodded, her face a mask of determination. I understand. I'm ready for whatever comes. They docked with the largest asteroid in the field, a massive chunk of rock and metal that the Crimson Corsairs had hollowed out to serve as their base. Darren hacked the airlock controls, and they slipped inside, moving silently through the dimly lit corridors. The sound of raucous laughter and clinking glasses echoed from up ahead, growing louder as they approached what appeared to be a bustling cantina. Dozens of pirates of various species lounged at the bar and around battered tables, drinking, gambling, and boasting of their latest heists. Darren's eyes scanned the room, searching for any sign of the Singularity Corps. His gaze landed on a heavily guarded door at the back of the cantina, flanked by two massive, heavily armed Krogan mercenaries. He nudged Liriana and tilted his head toward the door. That's got to be where they're keeping the core. We need a distraction so I can get close enough to... Before he could finish his sentence, a booming voice cut through the cantina chatter. Well, 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 what do we have here, boys? A couple of lost little lambs wandering into the wolves' den? Every head in the room swiveled toward the source of the voice, a towering figure in battered power armor, his scarred face twisted into a cruel smirk. The infamous Captain Raxa himself, flanked by his most trusted lieutenants. Raxa's gaze raked over Darren and Liriana, his eyes glinting with malice. A human and a breen working together. Now that's something you don't see every day. What brings you to my humble abode, I wonder? Darren stepped forward, his hand resting casually on the butt of his plasma pistol. We're here to make a deal, Raxa. That singularity core you stole from the Breen, we need it. Name your price. The pirate captain threw back his head and laughed, the sound echoing through the suddenly silent cantina. You've got guts, human, I'll give you that, but the core is not for sale. It's the key to my plans for galactic domination, you see. With its power, I'll be unstoppable. Liriana's eyes narrowed, her grip tightening on her own weapon. You're insane if you think you can control that kind of technology, pirate. It will consume you, just as Boron's lust for power has consumed him. Rax's smirk only widened at her words. He drew a massive plasma cannon from his back, its barrel glowing with deadly energy. Brave words, little princess. Let's see if you're still spouting them when I'm picking my teeth with your bones. All hell broke loose as the pirates surged forward, weapons blazing. 
Darren and Liriana dove for cover, returning fire with grim determination. The stench of ozone and charred flesh filled the air as bodies hit the floor, the cantina erupting into a whirlwind of violence and chaos. In the midst of the firefight, Darren saw his chance. He charged toward the guarded door, dodging blaster bolts and swinging fists as he went. One of the Krogan guards roared and lumbered forward to meet him, a vicious-looking battle-axe clutched in his meaty fists. Darren ducked under the Krogan's first swing and drove his fist into the creature's throat, feeling cartilage crunch beneath his knuckles. The Krogan gurgled and staggered back, his eyes bulging in surprise. Darren didn't give him a chance to recover. He snatched the battle-axe from the Krogan's slackening grip and buried it deep in the creature's skull with a sickening crunch. As the Krogan's body slumped to the floor, Darren turned to face the second guard, only to find Liriana standing over the fallen alien, her plasma blade humming with deadly energy. She met Darren's gaze, her eyes blazing with a fierce light. Go, she urged, her voice barely audible over the din of battle. Get the core, I'll hold them off. Darren hesitated for a split second, torn between his mission and the growing respect he felt for the alien princess. But he knew she was right. He gave her a curt nod and slammed his fist against the door controls, ducking inside as blaster bolts pinged off the metal around him. The room beyond was a treasure trove of stolen technology, crates of weapons and gadgets stacked high against the walls, and there, in the center of it all, was the Singularity Core, pulsing with an eerie blue light. Darren snatched it up and shoved it into his pack, his heart pounding with a mixture of triumph and dread. He burst back out into the cantina, ready to fight his way to Liriana's side, but the sight that greeted him made his blood run cold. The princess was on her knees, a plasma blade at her throat, held by a grinning Captain Raxer. Drop the pack, human, the pirate snarled, or I'll decorate the walls with her royal brains. Darren froze, his mind racing. He couldn't let Raxor have the core, but he couldn't let Liriana die either. In that moment, he knew with a sudden, blinding clarity that she meant more to him than just an ally or a means to an end. She was a friend, maybe even something more. He met her gaze, saw the determination and trust in her eyes, and made his choice. His hand flashed to his belt, grabbing a concussion grenade and priming it in one smooth motion. Raxor's eyes widened in surprise as Darren lobbed the grenade directly at his feet. They burst out of the base and back into the asteroid field, Darren's heart pounding in his ears. He could see his ship up ahead, waiting for them, like a beacon of hope in the darkness. But as they drew closer, a new sound reached his ears, the unmistakable roar of Breen warships dropping out of warp. Darren's jaw clenched as he raced up the ramp of his ship. Liriana still clutched tightly in his arms. He hit the airlock controls and sprinted for the cockpit, his mind already calculating jump coordinates and evasive maneuvers. But as he slid into the pilot's seat and reached for the controls, a slender blue hand caught his wrist. Liriana pulled herself upright, her eyes blazing with determination. "'We can't run forever, Darren,' she said softly, her voice barely audible over the blaring alarms. "'Sooner or later we'll have to make a stand. And when we do—' She reached out and covered his hand with her own, her touch sending a jolt of electricity through his skin. Darren swallowed hard, his heart swelling with a feeling he hadn't experienced in a long, long time. He twined his fingers with hers and met her gaze, a fierce grin spreading across his face. Then let's give them hell, princess. Darren's hand tightened on the controls, the singularity core heavy and powerful in his pack. He glanced at Liriana, saw the same fire burning in her eyes, and made his choice. You want the core, Zaxxon, he growled, his voice low and dangerous. Come and take it. And with that, he punched the thrusters and sent the ship hurtling toward the Breen fleet, ready to face whatever fate had in store for them, together. As Commander Zaxxon's warships closed in, weapons primed and ready to obliterate Darren's freighter, the human pilot knew they had only one chance to escape. He turned to Princess Liriana, his voice urgent but steady. We need a new ship, something fast and heavily armed, and I think I know just where to find one. Liriana nodded, her eyes hard with determination. 
Lead the way. Darren gunned the engines, sending the freighter hurtling towards the pirate stronghold. As they approached the asteroid base, he activated the ship's cloaking device, rendering them invisible to sensors. They docked silently in the hangar bay, slipping past the oblivious pirate guards. Moving swiftly through the shadowy corridors, Darren led Liriana to their target. Captain Raxa's personal ship, a sleek and deadly corvette bristling with advanced weaponry. They boarded the vessel, Darren's fingers flying over the unfamiliar controls as he bypassed security systems and fired up the engines. Alarms blared throughout the pirate base as Raxa's ship blasted out of the hangar, Darren at the helm and Liriana manning the weapons console. They rocketed past the startled pirate fleet, Zaxxon's warships hot on their heels. Set a course for the Galactic Council headquarters, Darren ordered, his jaw set with grim resolve. It's time to bring our case before the galaxy. But as they dropped out of warp at the Council's space station, their hearts sank. A massive Breen battlecruiser loomed before them, flanked by a squadron of fighters, and there, displayed on every viewscreen and hollow projector, was the sneering face of Emperor Boron himself. People of the galaxy, Boron declared, his voice dripping with false sincerity. I come before you today to expose a grave injustice. This human, Darren Carter, has kidnapped my beloved bride-to-be, Princess Liriana, and now seeks to sow chaos and terror throughout the stars. Darren and Liriana watched in horror as fabricated evidence played across the screens. Doctored footage of Darren attacking Liriana's ship, false testimonies from witnesses claiming to have seen the human brutalize the princess. The council members murmured amongst themselves, their expressions darkening with each passing moment. I demand the immediate return of Princess Liriana, Boron concluded, his eyes flashing with malice, and the arrest of Darren Carter for his crimes against the Breen Empire and the galaxy at large. The council conferred briefly. Then the Asari representative spoke, her voice heavy with regret. Darren Carter, in light of the evidence presented by Emperor Boron, this council has no choice but to issue a warrant for your arrest. You are to surrender yourself and Princess Liriana immediately. Darren's grip tightened on the ship's controls, his mind racing. They couldn't surrender, not now, not when the truth was still hidden behind Boron's lies. He glanced at Liriana, saw the same desperate resolve in her eyes, and made his decision. He slammed the throttle forward, sending the corvette hurtling away from the council station and into the depths of space. Zaxxon's warships gave chase, their weapons lighting up the void as Darren wove and dodged through a field of laser fire. We need allies, Liriana said, her voice strained as she returned fire against their pursuers. Someone who can help us expose Boron's treachery and clear our names. Darren nodded, his mind already racing ahead. I know just the man, Grayson Steele, my old mentor. He's a legend in the human resistance, a master of unconventional warfare. If anyone can help us turn the tables on Boron, it's him. They set a course for the remote world where Steele had retired, a planet on the fringes of civilized space. As they approached the old soldier's compound, Darren felt a flicker of hope amid the darkness. With Steele's help, they might just stand a chance. But when they landed and entered the compound, Steele greeted them with a grim expression. You two have kicked the hornet's nest, he said, his grizzled face etched with concern. Taking on the Breen Empire, that's no small task. If you want to succeed, you'll need more than just an old warhorse like me. He leaned forward, his eyes intense. You'll need a team, a group of specialists from across the galaxy. Hackers, infiltrators, demolition experts, each with their own unique skills and reasons to hate the Breen. Only then will you have a chance to strike at the heart of Boron's empire and bring his crimes to light. Darren and Liriana exchanged a glance, the weight of the task before them settling heavily on their shoulders. But there was no turning back now, no other choice but to fight. Together with Steel, they began to plan their next move, to seek out the outcasts and misfits who would become their unlikely allies in the battle to come. The war against Boron and his forces had only just begun, and the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. 
In the dimly lit cargo hold of their stolen ship, Darren and his team huddled around a holographic display of the Nexus space station. Grayson Steele, his grizzled face illuminated by the flickering blue light, pointed to a section of the station's outer hull. This is our entry point, he said, his voice low and steady. A maintenance airlock lightly guarded and easily breached. Once we're inside, we split up. Darren, you and the princess will head for the central data core. My team will create a diversion on the other side of the station, drawing away as many Breen soldiers as we can. Darren nodded, his jaw set with determination. He glanced at Liriana, who met his gaze with a fierce intensity. They had come too far to fail now. As the ship docked with the Nexus, hidden in the shadow of a passing freighter, Darren and his team moved swiftly and silently. They breached the airlock with practiced ease, slipping into the station's sterile corridors like ghosts. Darren and Liriana moved through the labyrinthine passages, their weapons at the ready. The sound of distant explosions and blaster fire echoed through the halls. Steele and his team were already at work. They rounded a corner and found themselves face to face with a squad of Breen soldiers. Darren reacted instantly, his plasma rifle flashing as he cut down the first two soldiers. Liriana leaped forward, her energy blade humming, as she engaged the remaining Breen in a deadly dance of strikes and parries. Together, they fought their way deeper into the station, leaving a trail of fallen enemies in their wake. The data core was just ahead, its reinforced doors looming before them. Darren sliced through the door's control panel with his blade, sparks flying as the mechanism shorted out. The doors slid open with a hiss, revealing a cavernous chamber filled with rows upon rows of data banks. I've got it, Darren said, his voice tight with excitement. Boron's war crimes, his plans for conquest, it's all here, and... He paused, his eyes widening as he scanned the data. Liriana, you need to see this. The princess joined him at the console, her gaze locked on the screen. There laid out in glowing text was a revelation that shook her to her core. She was no mere princess, but the last descendant of an ancient alien lineage, imbued with the power to shape the very fabric of the galaxy. And Boron, in his lust for power, sought to control that power by forcing her hand in marriage. Before they could process this stunning discovery, the chamber shook with the force of a nearby explosion. Emperor Boron's voice boomed over the station's comm system, dripping with malice. Did you think you could hide from me, human? You and your pathetic band of rebels have meddled in my affairs for the last time. Surrender the princess, or I will tear this station apart piece by piece until I find you. Darren and Liriana exchanged a look of grim determination. They had the evidence they needed, but now they had to fight their way out of the Nexus and back to their ship. They charged out of the data core, weapons blazing as they cut a path through the Breen forces swarming the corridors. Boron's personal guard, led by the ruthless commander Zaxxon, closed in on them from all sides. Zaxxon lunged at Darren, his energy blade clashing against the humans in a shower of sparks. They dueled fiercely, their weapons moving in a blur of strikes and counter-strikes. Liriana fought at Darren's side, her own blade flashing as she held off the Emperor's guards. The air crackled with the energy of their weapons, the stench of ozone and charred flesh filling the corridor. With a final desperate push, Darren and Liriana broke through the Breen lines and sprinted for their ship. They could hear Boron's furious roar echoing behind them, his forces in hot pursuit. They leaped into the waiting airlock, Steele and the others providing covering fire as they sealed the doors and disengaged from the station. The ship rocketed away from the Nexus, Plasma bolts streaking past its hull as the Breen gave chase. Darren slid into the pilot's seat, his hands flying over the controls as he plotted a rapid series of jumps through hyperspace. Liriana sagged into the co-pilot's chair, her breath coming in ragged gasps. They had done it. They had the evidence they needed to expose Boron's crimes and rally the galaxy against him. But the Emperor's fury would be unrelenting, and they knew their fight was far from over. As the stars streaked past the viewports and the ship hurtled deeper into uncharted space, Darren reached out and took Liriana's hand in his. They had started as unlikely allies, thrust together by circumstance and necessity,
But now, as they faced the uncertain future together, they knew they had become something more. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and they would need every ounce of strength, every shred of determination, to see their mission through to the end. The final battle was still to come, and they would face it as they had everything else, side by side, united against the darkness. The stolen ship streaked through the void, Darren's knuckles white on the controls as he pushed the engines to their limits. In the co-pilot's seat, Princess Liriana stared out at the stars, her mind reeling from the revelations they had uncovered on the Nexus. A descendant of the Celestials, a prophecy that could change the fate of the galaxy. It was almost too much to process. Behind them, Grayson Steele and the rest of the team huddled around a holographic display, poring over the data they had stolen from the Breen Intelligence Hub. The evidence of Emperor Boron's atrocities was damning, but it was the information about the Celestial Scepter that held their attention now. Tyr says the Scepter was hidden away on a planet called Zephyrus Prime, Steele said, his brow furrowed in concentration. A world lost to the ages, its location known only to a chosen few. Darren glanced over his shoulder, his jaw set with determination. Then that's where we're going. If this scepter is the key to stopping Boron and bringing peace to the galaxy, we have to find it before he does. Liriana nodded, her eyes hardening with resolve. I still can't believe that I'm some kind of chosen one, destined to wield this ancient power. But if it's the only way to save my people and countless others from Boron's tyranny, then I'll do whatever it takes. Darren reached out and squeezed her hand, a gesture of support and understanding. In the short time they had known each other, they had forged a bond stronger than either could have imagined, a connection born of shared struggle and sacrifice. We'll do this together, he said, his voice low and intense. You're not alone in this, Liriana, not any more. She met his gaze, her eyes shining with gratitude and something more, something that made Darren's heart skip a beat. But there was no time to dwell on such things now, not with the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance. They set course for Zephyrus Prime, following the trail of ancient clues and forgotten star charts. The journey was long and perilous, taking them through uncharted regions of space where danger lurked around every corner. Strange alien worlds with toxic atmospheres and hostile wildlife. Abandoned space stations, haunted by the ghosts of long-dead civilizations and always the looming threat of Emperor Boron's forces, dogging their every step. Commander Zaxxon pursued them with a single-minded fury, his ships appearing out of nowhere to unleash devastating barrages of plasma fire. Darren and his team fought back with everything they had, their skills and determination put to the ultimate test. Dogfights raged among the stars, the void lit up by the flashes of exploding ships and the searing beams of energy weapons. Darren flew like a man possessed, his piloting skills unmatched, as he outmaneuvered Zaxxon's fighters and sent them spiraling into oblivion. On the ground, Liriana and the others battled Breen soldiers and deadly alien creatures, their weapons blazing as they fought their way through ancient ruins and high-tech fortresses. The princess was a force to be reckoned with, her training in the art of war coming to the fore as she cut down her enemies with ruthless efficiency. But even as they fought and bled and pushed themselves to the brink of exhaustion, they knew that the true test still lay ahead. For somewhere on Zephyrus Prime, hidden among the crumbling monuments of a long-forgotten age, lay the Celestial Scepter, an artifact of immense power, capable of reshaping the very fabric of the universe. And whoever claimed it first would hold the fate of the galaxy in their hands. Darren and Liriana exchanged a look of grim determination as their ship hurtled towards the planet's surface, the ruins of an ancient city rising up to meet them. They had come too far to turn back now. One way or another, the final battle was about to begin. The ancient temple rose before them, a monolithic structure of weathered stone and alien architecture. Darren and Liriana exchanged a glance, their eyes filled with a mixture of anticipation and trepidation. This was the moment they had fought so hard for, the culmination of their perilous journey across the galaxy. With weapons at the ready, 
they led their team into the temple's cavernous entrance hall. The air was thick with the musty scent of age and the tang of ozone, a palpable energy thrumming through the stone beneath their feet. As they ventured deeper into the temple, the corridors twisted and turned, leading them through a maze of ancient puzzles and traps. Darren's quick wit and Liriana's celestial intuition proved invaluable as they navigated the labyrinth, their team working in perfect synchronicity to overcome each challenge. But as they approached the heart of the temple, a figure materialized before them, a towering construct of shimmering energy, its form shifting and pulsing with an otherworldly light. The AI Guardian, a creation of the ancient Celestials, stood as the final obstacle between them and the Celestial Scepter. Descendant of the Celestials, the Guardian's voice echoed through the chamber, its gaze fixed upon Liriana. You seek the power of the Scepter, but such power is not granted lightly. You must prove your worth through trials of mind, body, and spirit. Liriana stepped forward, her chin held high. I am ready. But Darren moved to her side, his hand coming to rest on her shoulder. Not alone, he said, his voice unwavering. We've come this far together, and we'll face these trials together. The Guardian's form shimmered, a flicker of something akin to amusement crossing its features. The trials are meant for the celestial descendant alone, but if you insist on accompanying her, human, then so be it. Know that the consequences of failure will be yours to bear. With a wave of the Guardian's hand, the chamber around them dissolved, replaced by a shimmering expanse of mist and starlight. And so the trials began. They faced physical challenges that pushed their bodies to the brink of endurance, leaping across bottomless chasms and scaling sheer walls of crumbling stone. They grappled with mental tests that strained their intellect and resolve, solving riddles and illusions that threatened to unravel their very sanity. But it was the confrontations with their own fears and doubts that proved the most grueling. Spectres of their past failures and deepest insecurities rose up to torment them, whispering words of despair and hopelessness. Through it all, Darren and Liriana clung to each other, their bond growing stronger with each trial they overcame. They began to see the truth of their roles in the prophecy, not as lone heroes but as two halves of a greater whole, their fates intertwined in the tapestry of the galaxy's future. As they stood on the precipice of the final trial, battered and bruised but unbroken, a sudden explosion rocked the temple to its foundations. Emperor Boron had arrived, his forces breaching the ancient defences with a barrage of plasma fire and shock troops. Chaos erupted as Darren and Liriana's team engaged the Breen warriors in a desperate battle. The temple's halls transformed into a war zone of flashing blades and sizzling energy beams. Amidst the fray, Emperor Boron himself strode forward, his eyes alight with malevolent glee. With a triumphant roar he seized the celestial scepter from its pedestal, the artifact flaring to life in his grasp. Raw power surged through the Emperor's form, his laughter echoing through the chamber as he turned the scepter's might upon the temple itself. Stone cracked and metal groaned as the ancient structure began to collapse around them, the scepter's energy tearing it apart from within. Darren and Liriana, their bodies aching and their spirits battered, locked eyes across the battlefield. No words were needed. They knew what had to be done. Rallying their team with shouts of defiance, they charged headlong into the fray, determined to stop Emperor Boron and fulfill their destiny, no matter the cost. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and they would not let it fall. Amidst the crumbling ruins of the ancient temple, Darren and Liriana fought back to back, their weapons flashing as they cut through the ranks of Emperor Boron's elite guards. The scepter's eerie glow pulsed in Boron's grasp, casting twisted shadows across his sneering face. "'You fools!' Boron roared, his voice resonating with the scepter's power. "'Did you think you could challenge me? With this artifact, I am unstoppable!' He thrust the scepter forward, and a wave of energy rippled outward, slamming into Darren and Liriana's team. One by one their allies staggered, their eyes glazing over as the scepter's influence took hold. Grayson Steele, 
his grizzled features contorted in a snarl, turned his plasma rifle on Darren. The other team members followed suit, their weapons trained on their former leaders. No, Liriana cried, her heart wrenching as she faced the prospect of fighting her friends. Darren gritted his teeth, his mind racing. They couldn't attack their own people, but they couldn't let Boron control them either. His gaze landed on a cluster of ancient machines lining the temple walls, their purpose long forgotten. Liriana, cover me, he shouted, sprinting towards the machines. Plasma bolts scorched the stone at his heels as steel and the others opened fire. Liriana leaped into action, her energy blade humming as she deflected the incoming shots. She reached deep within herself, tapping into the well of celestial power that had lain dormant for so long. A shimmering barrier sprang into existence around Darren, shielding him from the onslaught. Darren reached the machines, his fingers flying over the alien controls. He had no idea what they did, but he had to try something. Sparks flew as he ripped out components, frantically assembling a makeshift device. Emperor Boron's laughter echoed through the chamber. Your pathetic human tricks are no match for the power of the Celestials. He raised the scepter high, preparing to unleash its full might upon Darren and Liriana. But Liriana stood firm, her eyes blazing with an otherworldly light. She met Boron's gaze, pouring all her strength and will into the connection. You are not worthy of that power, Boron, she declared, her voice ringing with authority. The scepter belongs to the true heir of the Celestials. Boron faltered, his grip on the scepter wavering as Liriana's presence pressed against his mind. Seizing the chance, Darren activated his cobbled-together device. A pulse of electromagnetic energy burst from the machine, washing over the temple. The scepter in Boron's hand flickered and dimmed, its connection to the Emperor's mind severed. Steel and the others blinked, shaking off the scepter's control as the EMP blast freed them. Liriana advanced on Boron, her celestial powers surging through her veins. The scepter trembled in the Emperor's grasp, then tore itself free, soaring into Liriana's outstretched hand. It flared to life, its glow pure and radiant in the presence of its rightful wielder. Boron stumbled back, his face ashen as he realized the tide had turned. Darren and the team surrounded him, their weapons trained on the defeated Emperor. It's over, Boron, Darren said coldly, his finger tightening on the trigger of his plasma rifle. Your reign of terror ends here. Liriana stood tall, the celestial scepter thrumming with power in her grasp. She turned to face her team, her gaze filled with determination and purpose. The final confrontation was at hand, and with the scepter's might and her friends by her side, she knew they would emerge victorious. The battle for the fate of the galaxy had reached its climax, and Darren and Liriana stood at the center of the storm, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. With Emperor Boron in chains, and Princess Liriana clutching the celestial scepter, Darren and his ragtag team raced through the crumbling temple. Chunks of stone rained down around them as they sprinted for their stolen ship, the evidence of Boron's atrocities clutched tightly in Liriana's free hand. Just as they reached the temple's entrance, a figure emerged from the shadows. Commander Zaxxon battered but not broken, his eyes blazing with fanatical loyalty to his fallen emperor. You think you've won, human, he snarled, igniting his plasma blade. Boron's vision will not die here. Darren stepped forward, his own weapon humming to life. It's over, Zaxxon. Surrender now and you'll be shown mercy. The Breen commander laughed a harsh and grating sound. Mercy? I spit on your mercy. I challenge you, Darren Carter, to a duel for the fate of the galaxy. Prove your worth if you dare. Liriana gripped Darren's arm, her eyes wide with concern. Darren, no, we have to get this evidence to the council. But Darren gently removed her hand, his gaze never leaving Zaxxon. I have to do this, Liriana. Zaxxon represents everything Boron stood for, Defeating him here now will send a message to the galaxy. He turned to his team, his expression grim. Get the princess and the evidence to safety. I'll handle this. As his friends reluctantly retreated to the ship, 
Darren faced Zaxxon, the weight of the galaxy on his shoulders. They circled each other, blades glowing in the dim light of the temple. Zaxxon struck first, his blade a blur of motion. Darren parried, the force of the blow sending shockwaves up his arms. They traded blows, each attack more vicious than the last, neither giving quarter. Sweat poured down Darren's face as he ducked and weaved, drawing upon every ounce of skill and experience he had gained on his journey. Zaxxon was relentless, his every strike fueled by rage and desperation. As the duel reached a crescendo, Darren saw his opening. With a feint and a twist he sent Zaxxon's blade spinning from his grasp. The Breen commander fell to his knees, Darren's weapon at his throat. Finish it, Zaxxon spat, his eyes burning with hate. But Darren shook his head, lowering his blade. No, I won't become what I fought against. He stepped back, offering his hand to the fallen warrior. The galaxy needs healing, Zaxxon, not more bloodshed. Help us build a better future. For a long moment, Zaxxon stared at Darren's outstretched hand, conflict raging in his eyes. Then slowly he reached out and grasped it, allowing himself to be pulled to his feet. You've shown me the error of my ways, human, he said, his voice thick with emotion. I will testify against Boron before the council. His reign of terror ends today. Together they boarded the waiting ship, Princess Liriana and the Celestial Scepter secure in the hold. As they rocketed towards the Galactic Council, Darren felt a sense of hope swelling in his chest. The road ahead would be long and difficult, but with his friends by his side and the truth on their side, he knew they would prevail. The ship touched down on the Council's landing pad, a sea of reporters and dignitaries surging forward to meet them. Darren and Liriana strode down the ramp, flanked by their team and a subdued Commander Zaxxon. Flashbulbs popped and questions rang out as they made their way into the council chambers. The evidence was presented, the testimonies given. Zaxon's words damning and unequivocal sealed Boron's fate. The council voted unanimously to strip the emperor of his power and sentence him to a lifetime of imprisonment. As the verdict was read, cheers erupted across the galaxy. On a thousand worlds in a million cities, people took to the streets to celebrate the fall of the tyrant and the dawn of a new era. But for now, as the cheers washed over them and the celestial scepter glowed with a soft, comforting light, they allowed themselves a moment of peace and triumph. The future was theirs to shape, and they would face it together. As the dust settled in the aftermath of Emperor Boron's defeat, Princess Liriana stood tall before her people, the celestial scepter glowing softly in her grasp. Her voice rang out across the gathered crowds, a clarion call for unity and peace. For too long our empire has been a force of oppression and fear, she declared, her eyes shining with determination. But no more. From this day forward, we will work hand in hand with the other races of the galaxy, building a future of cooperation and understanding. The Breen people cheered, their voices rising in a chorus of support for their new leader. Liriana turned to Darren, a smile of gratitude on her face. None of this would have been possible without you, she said softly, reaching out to take his hand. The galaxy owes you a debt it can never repay. Darren felt a swell of emotion in his chest, a mix of pride and something deeper, more profound. I was just doing what was right, he replied, squeezing her hand gently. In the days that followed, Darren found himself swept up in a whirlwind of change and activity. The Galactic Council, recognizing his pivotal role in defeating Emperor Boron, offered him the position of human ambassador to the Breen Empire. It was a chance to continue working closely with Liriana, to help forge a new era of peace and prosperity for both their peoples. Darren was on the verge of accepting the position when a grim-faced Liriana summoned him to her private chambers. The celestial scepter lay on a pedestal before her, its light pulsing with an ominous rhythm. Liriana took a deep breath, her eyes brimming with unshed tears. I've learned the truth about the scepter's power, she said, her voice trembling. The ancient prophecy that spoke of my destiny, it also foretells a great sacrifice. She explained that whoever wielded the scepter was bound to it, 
their life essence slowly drained away to maintain the balance of the galaxy. Lyriana, as the last descendant of the Celestials, was now fated to give her own life to preserve the peace she had fought so hard to achieve. Darren felt as though the ground had dropped out from beneath him, a yawning chasm opening up in his heart. No, he whispered, his voice hoarse with emotion. There has to be another way. But Liriana shook her head, a sad smile on her face. This is my destiny, Darren. I must accept it for the sake of my people and the galaxy as a whole. In that moment, Darren realized the depth of his feelings for the alien princess. The thought of losing her, of watching her sacrifice herself for the greater good, was too much to bear. He made the decision that would haunt him for the rest of his life. I can't stay, he said, his voice breaking. I can't watch you die, Liriana. I... I'm sorry. Tears streamed down Liriana's face, but she nodded in understanding. They held each other for a long moment, two hearts beating as one, before Darren tore himself away and fled the room. In a bittersweet farewell, Darren and Liriana parted ways, each committed to fulfilling their own destinies. Darren returned to Earth, his heart heavy with grief and loss, while Liriana threw herself into her work, striving to unite the races of the galaxy in a lasting harmony. The weeks turned into months, and Darren found himself haunted by the memory of the princess he had grown to love. He poured himself into his own work, exploring the stars and fostering understanding between humans and the other species he encountered. But always in the back of his mind, the image of Liriana's face lingered, a bittersweet reminder of what might have been. And then one day the news reached him. Princess Liriana, beloved leader of the Breen Empire, had passed away. In her final moments, she had used the last of her life essence to seal the Celestial Scepter's power, ensuring that no one could ever again abuse its might. The galaxy mourned the loss of their shining beacon of hope, but her legacy endured. The peace and unity she had fought so hard to achieve lived on, a testament to her courage and sacrifice. Darren felt the weight of her loss like a physical blow, a pain that would never truly heal, but he knew that he could not let her sacrifice be in vain. He redoubled his efforts, working tirelessly to build bridges between worlds, to honor the memory of the alien princess who had taught him the true meaning of love and sacrifice. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.